I feel like I just got a whole lot shorter. I'm making a mess again. I dipped into the steel pile. This is two inch square steel tubing, eighth inch wall thickness. I need a fabricated cross member for the Colt. Right now the engine's just hanging on the frame here with uh, the timing mount and the transmission mount. And that's it. That's all that's holding the motor up. The cross member has both the front and rear roll stoppers on it. And I'm going to have to fabricate that. But first you might be wondering how you line this thing up and make sure it's all straight. Since it's only on two mounts, uh, stuff's flopping all over the place here. And uh, you know you have the alignment of the motor correct. When looking over here from the driver's side, you get the crank pulley bolt to line up with that hole. You'll see me go back and forth and check this a lot because uh, during the process of this, we just have to keep that lined up. Previously, uh, I took this Colt cross member and I, uh, I chopped it off on the back side, just past the point where the mounts used to bolt. And here, you see I've got a solid mount. I forget exactly what part number this is, but I'll put it in the description. It doesn't really matter because we're going to chop this steel stuff down here off on the bottom anyway. I'm going to try to reuse this bottom flange so that I can make a bolt-on mount on my cross member and uh, easily install and remove the engine. Now this thing right here, this is an odd little combination. I welded the front mount onto it, uh, lined that up on the front of the car and saw how much of the cross member I was able to use. And then right there where I finished welding the mount on, I pretty much stopped. Originally I was going to put a... But uh, I discovered something really funky that the uh, Mitsubishi Mechanics did to make life easy for us guys who were trying to swap to all-wheel drive. Using the back half of the Colt cross member, and you see right here, I cut a straight line all the way across the width of the metal there, and then squished it to change the angle on it. And the reason why I did that is because of how it mounts underneath the car. There's the original mount location where the uh, front cross member lines up. It's just a perfect fit for a transfer case. It's like they intended for it to be all-wheel drive. Well, that kind of messes up putting the cross member back in the factory location. But interestingly enough, just a few inches over, maybe 10 inches from that spot, lower down on the frame, there's another set of bolt holes. And they've got nuts welded in there on the back and everything. And they're in the exact same pattern as the two that are up here behind the transfer case. So I'm able to actually move the cross member over to this point, which is lower on the frame. So I actually have to make modifications to the bottom of that mount to bring the angle up a little bit so that it's not pointing so far down at the ground. You see this little channel here in the, trans in the transmission? It's about two inches wide, a little bit bigger. It uh, lines directly up with that. Let me see if I can show you. And here's how it lines up. Bolted into the factory location for an all-wheel drive car that wasn't even made for the United States. But the chassis isn't any different. The nuts are already there. They're already threaded. They're in the right shapes, but you can easily cross-thread them, so be careful. Here's that other mount that I uh, welded to the front part of the cross member. And I've set this up in position pretty much where it needs to be. So you can see here from this angle, that doesn't line up very good. It looks to me like I just need to clear this little piece right here. Make sure that that doesn't bite. I don't want to interfere with any of the stuff that bolts on right here. This is where the slave cylinder goes. So I gotta definitely make clearance for that. So what I need to do is put a bend in that to connect that gap. And I'll show you how I do that.
Well, crap. This is like Inception. It's my video within the same video. And this video doesn't even exist yet. Well, people, I lost an hour and a half of footage, but at the current pace, that's only 57 seconds. Uh, yeah, this is the current state of my MacBook at the moment. Um, hard drive kicked the bucket, three quarter terabyte. Now, I was just getting ready to export the project. Now you get this little gem and the bad news that uh, some footage is missing. Well, what's missing is I bent and squished this spot in front of the rear mount for extra clearance on the transmission. This let me tuck the crossmember for a low profile fit. And I cut a four inch hole out of the other side for clearance on the bell housing. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah, back to work! <laughs>
Looks good. Smells good. Looks good. Smells good. Have a fox. glasses of apple juice. I think you need to have some apple juice. Whoa. 